In the context of financial infrastructure, blockchain <coughs> technologies could process financial transactions by validating, giving effect to, and recording those transactions in distributed ledgers maintained by multiple parties. All these technologies provide both for a shared database, a ledger, and shared rules that govern the validation and recording of transactions. One significant differentiator is whether the shared ledger is open to anyone as a potential validator, as in the Bitcoin case, or whether validation of or access to the ledger is limited only to permissioned parties. But in any of these approaches, the entities maintaining copies of the ledger use an open validation methodology to ensure the integrity of each transaction that is processed. And there is transparency over the ledger, permitting other parties to independently assess its, its integrity. This concept of sharing the ledger arguably creates greater flexibility for the processing of transactions, reduced expense, and other benefits. There are many other contemplated applications for blockchain technologies, including creating financial assets by means of so-called smart contracts, in which the covenants and payment flows associated with the asset are embedded in code that is executed on automatic, rather than through an agent's intervention throughout the asset's life. We may get into some of these visionary concepts as to how these technologies can be applied. As Mike alluded to, I was in his position as the CEO of DTCC throughout the financial crisis of recent years. So however useful blockchain technologies may turn out to be, I've learned firsthand through the fires of 2007, 2008, 2009, that it is absolutely imperative to have transactions flowing through something that can be subjected to central management. Preserving the ability to intervene in that flow to facilitate it and to protect it where necessary. When the pressures of the 2008 financial crisis repeat themselves, as at some point they unquestionably will, a processing infrastructure that operates completely on automatic without a central managing hand would drive the financial system straight off a cliff. Preserving a central managing hand as an essential design component has to be part of any implementation scheme. <laughs>